What's up, bro? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be moving code out of the game view class and into a couple separate subclasses. Um, right now, the game view has vertex, buffer, and vertices, which really belong to a game object. So we'll create a game object class, and then it has the draw function. The game view's main objective in life is to basically do key input and mouse input. So we're gonna make sure that uh, that's all it's going to be doing in the future. And for now, we're gonna move stuff out. So we'll create a renderer class and a game object class. It's gonna be a blast, let's go. All right, so back in our code, we're gonna start up here at the top of vertices and vertex buffer. These should not go in here. These should be a, a game object, or at least properties on a game object. They're probably properties on a mesh, but we'll do that in a future episode. We'll create a whole mesh library. It'll be a blast, I promise. Uh, but for now, we need to move these at least into a game object so we can separate them out from the game view. So what I'm gonna do is go over here to my hierarchy of folders, and I'm gonna create a new group. This new group is going to be called, oh boy. It's gonna be called, uh, let's call it Game Shiz. That's a good name. Apparently I've already done this a million times. Making videos is hard. That's okay. Okay, so game shiz, and inside of game shiz, we're gonna create a new metal class or Swift file if you haven't set up any templates, which I can show you if you want me to show you. It's pretty cool. Um, but I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it game object. Inside of game object, we're gonna have game object things like, back on the game view, our vertices and vertex buffers. So I'm gonna take this, these two properties out from the game view and I'm just gonna shove them into game object, just like so. Now we need an initializer to initialize those mugs, the vertices and the vertex buffer. And just like back in the game view, we're calling create vertices and create buffer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove these guys from that initializer and I'm gonna pop them into the game objects initializer. Also, the game view has the create vertices and create buffers, so we're gonna take those out as well. Bada boom, bada build. Oops, <laughs> accidentally build. Uh, so game view, all right. So it's already starting to look a little bit thinner, right? And that's a compliment for you, Mr. Game View class. Um, but we still have draw stuff. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna kind of clean this up just a little bit more. These, okay, so I know you might not understand this yet, but these actually belong to the game object class. And the reason being, each game object in the entire game will have a render pipeline state because when we send stuff to the vertex uh, or to the vertex shader, um, it's going to be kind of set up with that object's vertex descriptor. You know what I mean? So this right here is a part of the game object. Render command encoder dot set vertex buffer. Well, we're setting the vertex buffer on the game object and draw primitives. Well, we're going to draw primitives for that game object. So what we need to do is we need to take this stuff. Actually, I'm going to go back over to game object. And I'm gonna create another function in there. And I'm gonna call it just render the same old fashioned renderer you've seen before. We're gonna render. So game object, we're gonna be able to call game object dot render from outside. We'll pass in a render command encoder, just like so, MTL render command encoder. And then inside of this render, we can now do what the game view does with the game object and take these guys out. Uh, yes, take these ones out, go back to game object and pop them in there. So it looks like our device up here on create buffers isn't pointing at our engine dot device. That's okay. I told you I, there was slippery guys last episode, I'm sure. Uh, you knew about that. So we'll take out these question marks because we want them to not be nil. And yeah, look at that. It's our game object. It's all that code that was back on our game view. Now it's in here. So if I were to just for cheeses and gizzies, that shits and gigs, I should have just said it. Uh, we'll create a game object right here. Uh, yep, object equals, well, no, let's not instantiate it yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna instantiate it down here because game object, has render command and coder stuff and pipeline state stuff. So in game view, if we were to instantiate it up here, this engine.ignite would be called after this was, it would instantiate this and then engine.ignite would go. So this would not have any, the render pipeline states in this object would be nil and then it would break and blow up. So what we need to do is we need to instantiate it down here. Game object 
equals game object. Actually, we probably could have instantiated it up there. That's okay. Um, now that I think about it, because really we're not rendering until these things are created. Anyway, moving on. Self dot game object equals game object, and inside of the render class, we'll call game object dot render render command encoder, just like so. Oh, now if I were to build this, we're gonna fix some errors. It looks like this needs the render command encoder. I'm just gonna click the red dot. Let's build. Let's see what else you're failing on. Probably something back over in game object. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what the error is. Okay, yes, so let's put a bang right there. All right, so let's just talk about real quick what just happened. Var game object, we instantiated it, and now it's basically creating itself just like it was before, where it's calling init, it's initializing its vertices, it's initializing its vertex buffer, and then it's calling render. So in game view, uh, we're going through the draw function and we're going to call game object render. We're going to pass the render command encoder we created right there and it should render. So if I press play right now, we should get the same result we had before. Beautiful. So now that we have our, I'm going to get rid of these. Now that we have our um, game object set up, let's get rid of, so we can, we can get this down a little bit more, right? I told you that a game view should have key input and mouse input and basically instantiate itself. And that's all we actually wanted to do. So this draw function doesn't belong in here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna create an MTK view delegate. What the hell is an MTK view delegate? Well, this is the MTK view. When we create a delegate, we're gonna delegate the render function, the draw function of the view to that class. So over here in, let's put it in display. I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it renderer. And this renderer class will do our drawing for us. It will do the actual rendering. So inside renderer, what the first thing I need to do is I need to inherit from NS object. And that's so that I can extend extension renderer. We're gonna extend renderer into an MTK view delegate. Now there's two functions that are required and mandatory. If you were to build right now, it'd probably break. If you, there's two functions that you need to do. So um, just start typing MTK view and you'll see it come up at the top. And that's the drawable size will change function. Now what that does is it's basically used when the, when the uh, window is resized. So when the window is resized. Now this is really handy when we start doing projection matrices and we need to update the aspect ratio or the different sizes of the window. So um, uh, we can track that stuff. Uh, but there's also one more function that we need to override and that's going to be not override but do and that's going to be the draw function and this draw is going to be passing in the view that we're delegating from and it will do that automatically you won't actually need to do that uh, pass like call the draw function it'll do that automatically so back in our I'm gonna wait back, I'm gonna put that at the top right there back in our game view we can basically take out all the code from this draw and delete that draw function and pop it all into the draw function of our renderer. So our game view will now delegate all of the code inside of the draw to the uh, renderer's game view draw. Now, in order to do that, in order to make the uh, renderer be the delegate of the MTK view, we need to go back to game view and we need to instantiate that class. So I'm gonna change game object to the renderer and I'm gonna make that a renderer object and I'm gonna instantiate it down here. And then what I can call is we have our renderer class. Now what we can call is self.delegate equals renderer. Now it will delegate all of its stuff, all of its draw functionality to the renderer class. And I need to say renderer here. Now it, will, and now it will delegate all of its draw functionality to the renderer class. So inside renderer, it will call this draw as opposed to the draw in game view. And this is automatic. It'll do that automatically. It'll work exactly the same, except we do have some errors. So since we're taking in the view, it's the same MTK view. So what we can do is just replace self here with view and self here with view. Looks like we don't have our game object anymore. So up in the renderer, just to create it, why not? Uh, we're gonna create that game object as a game object. 
equals game object, just like show. I'm gonna build and just see if the, all the errors resolve themselves, and they do. So let's press play one more time and find out what happened. Look at that, we're back to our same exact triangle. It's getting updated 60 frames per second. If we check this guy, you'll see it's rocking 50, 50 frames per second. And yeah, we got the exact same result. So we have game view, which is a game view. And then under here, what we can do is we can do mouse input and the keyboard input, right? And then we'll have another class that will take care of all of this for us. This will basically just be the, uh, the listener for those inputs and then we'll have a class to take care of what happens when you do that um but yeah we're delegating to our renderer our renderer is created pretty much just remember this ns object up here and these two functions of the mtk view delegate um we're using the exact same draw function the render command and everything's created exactly the same way it's just now it's separated into multiple classes that are actually like it, it makes a lot more sense so I hope you guys liked that episode. Very quick, straight to the point. It's how I like it. Uh, so go ahead and like, subscribe, do whatever the heck you want to do. Um, but until next week, I'll see you next week. Yeah. Peace.